It was the fall of 1991 when my family and I decided to leave the hustle and bustle of city life behind and move to a quaint, isolated cabin in the heart of West Virginia. The decision was prompted by the desire for safety and serenity, a stark contrast to the unsafe neighborhood we had grown weary of. Little did we know that our seemingly idyllic retreat would soon become the stage for a series of inexplicable and chilling events. Brian Kindle, a skilled carpenter, and I, along with our young children, Blair and Sean, embraced the rustic charm of our new home in Slainsville. The single-floor cabin was nestled deep within the West Virginia forest, far from the prying eyes of neighbors. Despite the seclusion, we found solace in the safety it provided for our kids, a luxury we hadn't experienced in our previous, less secure neighborhood. To enhance our sense of security, we adopted a beautiful and friendly black lab named Coco. The kids quickly bonded with her, and she became an integral part of our family, offering protection and companionship in our remote surroundings. The first unnerving incident occurred shortly after we settled into our new abode. We decided to throw an impromptu birthday celebration for Jordan, the daughter of Belinda's brother, who was close in age to our kids. As the children played in the living room, we adults chatted in the nearby kitchen. It was then that we noticed something peculiar. The balloons the kids were playing with seemed to defy the laws of gravity. One balloon descended from the ceiling as if being held by an invisible force, only to rise back up after reaching the middle of the room. We watched in silence, trying to make sense of the surreal scene. The kids remained oblivious to the anomaly, and the parents, puzzled and unnerved, decided to investigate. Jordan, when questioned, mentioned speaking to someone unseen when the balloon descended. The parents chuckled, attributing the strange occurrence to a child's imagination, dismissing any lingering unease. A few days later, Brian and Blair set out to explore the woods behind our property. In the midst of the forest, they stumbled upon a charred van, its frame the only remnant of a fire that had consumed it. Burnt stuffed animals and children's toys scattered inside painted a haunting picture. The discovery left us with more questions than answers. How had the van ended up there, devoid of any nearby roads? What terrible events had unfolded before our arrival? The unsettling incidents continued to mount. Brian's daily commute to Baltimore for work proved grueling, leading him to spend weekdays with his mother in Maryland. This left Belinda and the kids alone in our forest-bound cabin, a situation we had deemed safe but would soon question. One evening, as Blair eagerly requested to spend a night in our RV camper, Belinda reluctantly agreed, hoping to alleviate the kids' cabin fever. Little did she know, this decision would open the door to a series of inexplicable and eerie events. As Blair settled into the camper with Coco by her side, the adults remained in the main house. The night took a chilling turn when Coco, typically calm and protective, began growling and acting agitated. The parents rushed to the living room, only to witness a balloon-like entity descending from the ceiling, moving independently, and then ascending again. The inexplicable balloon incident left us bewildered, but we brushed it off as a bizarre occurrence. However, strange dreams and unexplainable phenomena continued to plague our nights. One night, Belinda dreamt of a boy signaling her to follow him. In the dream, they reached a front yard covered in white sheets hanging from clotheslines, leading to a disconcerting encounter with a dark figure. Awakening with a start, Belinda found a clothespin at the foot of her bed, intensifying her unease. The ominous atmosphere escalated when Blair, alone in the camper, woke to find Coco growling and fixated on a figure outside the window. Belinda, upon investigation, found nothing amiss, chalking it up to Coco's reaction to wildlife. The breaking point came when Blair, having seen a figure running towards the house, sought refuge under her covers. Belinda, dismissive of her daughter's fears, reassured her before returning to her room. However, a tapping sensation on her head, without a visible source, left Belinda shaken. As she checked on her kids, Sean's broken arm and Blair's terrified state forced her to confront the possibility that something malevolent lurked in our home. Desperate for answers, Belinda sought solace in the community. A chance encounter at a gas station unveiled a grim chapter in our cabin's history. The last occupant was rumored to have committed heinous acts against children, prompting vigilante justice that culminated in his disappearance. Armed with this unsettling knowledge, Belinda and the kids returned home, 
only to discover Coco missing. The sense of dread that permeated the cabin pushed us to the brink. Unable to endure another night, we abandoned our home, leaving behind a trail of unexplained events and unanswered questions. As Mark delved deeper into the mysteries of the old house, the shadows seemed to come alive. It was as if the very walls whispered ancient secrets, and the air carried the weight of a thousand untold stories. Mark's nightly investigations intensified. Eerie footsteps echoed through empty hallways, and ghostly figures danced at the edge of his vision. The air became dense with an otherworldly presence that sent shivers down his spine. Mark found himself drawn to a peculiar room on the top floor, a room that seemed to radiate a malevolent energy. Every step toward it was met with a chilling draft, and the temperature dropped noticeably as he approached the creaking door. When Mark pushed it open, the room revealed itself in a flickering candlelight. Dust motes danced in the air, casting an ethereal glow on the decaying wallpaper. The room was frozen in time, as if it held its breath, waiting for an unsuspecting soul to disturb its slumber. In the room, Mark discovered an old journal that belonged to the previous owner of the house, a man named Elijah Blackwood. The journal chronicled the descent into madness and the summoning of dark entities. Mark was gripped by the ominous entries, realizing that the house was a vessel for something far more sinister than he could have imagined. As he read, the temperature in the room plummeted further, and the shadows seemed to coalesce into ominous shapes. Mark's heartbeat echoed in his ears as he pieced together the horrifying truth the house was a gateway to the supernatural, and he had unwittingly become entangled in its malevolent web. Mark couldn't escape the feeling of being watched. Whispers echoed through the house, and unseen hands brushed against his skin. Sleep became an elusive sanctuary as nightmares bled into waking hours. One night, Mark awoke to the sound of a child's laughter. Following the haunting melody, he found himself in the attic, where a spectral apparition beckoned him. The ghostly figure of a little girl, her eyes hollow voids, stood at the center of a circle of flickering candles. As Mark approached, the temperature plummeted, and a voice echoed in his mind, an ancient incantation uttered by the ghostly child. The room vibrated with an otherworldly force, and Mark realized he was in the presence of something beyond human comprehension. Haunted by the malevolent forces that gripped the house, Mark sought a way to sever the supernatural connection. He scoured the journal for a ritual or incantation that could banish the entities, but each attempt only seemed to strengthen their hold. As Mark's physical and mental strength waned, the oppressive grip of the house tightened. Every shadow seemed to leer at him, every creak of the floorboards a sinister whisper. Reality and nightmare melded into an indistinguishable haze, leaving Mark teetering on the brink of sanity. In his darkest hour, with trembling hands, Mark delved into the depths of the journal one last time. Amongst the cryptic scribblings, he unearthed a glimmer of hope, a forgotten incantation, a beacon of salvation hidden amidst the darkness. With grim determination, Mark set about preparing for the ritual, the weight of countless tortured souls pressing upon him. But the house, sensing its impending liberation, fought back with ferocious intensity. Shadows writhed and twisted, the air thick with malevolence. Undeterred, Mark forged ahead, his resolve steeled against the onslaught of paranormal fury. With each word of the incantation, the very foundation of the house trembled, ancient wards breaking under the force of his will. And then, in a crescendo of supernatural tumult, the ritual reached its zenith. The house convulsed, as if purging itself of centuries-old malevolence. An otherworldly scream rent the air, reverberating through the corridors with a deafening finality. As the dust settled and the echoes faded, Mark stood amidst the stillness of the now-vacant house. The oppressive aura that had gripped him for so long had dissipated, replaced by an eerie calm. Though battered and weary, Mark knew that he had succeeded where others had faltered. He had broken the shackles that bound the house to its malevolent past. And as he stepped out into the cool night air, he carried with him the knowledge that he had brought peace to the tormented souls that had long languished within its walls.